in the precious and oh glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. My name is Brian Mason and this is part two of the Bible study titled Elisha Prayed. Let us be encouraged in these days when our faith needs to be strengthened that no interference can prevent the progress of God. God who is the author of life and the finisher of faith. And as we look at Elisha, we shall see that Elisha was a man of God, a man who would not be moved, a man who believed, and a man who so, so as God so, he could see as God sees, and God heard him pray, and God answered. So, I'd like to turn with me to continue in 2 Kings chapter 6. And I'll continue where I left off. So, verse 12. And one of the servants of the king of Israel, of, of, of Syria, I should say, who was intent upon coming and warring against the king of Israel. The king of Syria was intent on trying to interfere in God's purposes. But God had his man, and that man was not the king of Israel. That man happened to be God's prophet, Elisha. And one of his servants said, None, my lord, because what, what had gone on before? Elisha had on a number of occasions warned the king of Israel of what the plans of the king of Syria were. And the king of Syria, well, what did he make of this when he heard that it was Elisha? And notice the servants called Elisha the prophet that is in Israel. The prophet, not a prophet, not one of many prophets, but the way this reads, Elisha was the only prophet in those days. The prophet of God himself. Now there may have been other prophets, but in the plan and purpose of God, Elisha was his man for his time. And God still has his men and his women for this particular time. Let us not think that, oh, Oh, God is no longer interested. God is no longer in control. There's no, there's no such, no such uh, person as, a God, as God these days. That's what the evil one would have us believe. But we will have none of it. Because God is the same God as he was the God of Elisha. The God who worked according to his own plan and purpose. The God who made progress with his plan and purpose. Even in the midst of apostasy. By those who were called to be his people. Even in the midst of satanic scheming. 
because undoubtedly the king of Syria was coming against the plan of God. He was looking to interfere. But God had a man who believed him. A man who would call upon him. And a man who would have no doubts that God is the God. The only God. And he's the God who hears and answers prayer. Has he changed in these days? Are you going to tell me he's not the same God? The word of God tells me that is not so. I am the Lord and beside me there is none other. Are you standing on the word of God? As you st stand on the word of God and this, the unchangeable word of God, then we can expect the God himself as he did with Elisha. Shall answer according to his own plan and purpose, and that nothing, no nothing, shall prevent the promises, the sealed promises within this book. being fulfilled right down to the very last one. That is where faith is needed in these days, but not our own faith. The faith of the Son of God within us by His Spirit. So here this servant Telling the king of Syria that the prophet in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. God made known to Elisha the evil schemings of the king of Syria. And God in these days too is still making known to his prophets what the evil schemings of the devil, Satan, is up to. And it's to be in that same authority that Elisha had. In fact, even a greater authority because of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. And his return to that place at the right hand of the Father whereby has been given unto him all authority in heaven and earth. And the one who is at the right hand of the Father is not the word here say, greater works. Ye shall do greater works. Because I go unto the Father and the greater works are unfolding here on earth. And the greater works, we shall see them 
the strongholds of, of the evil one cannot hinder cannot interfere with the progress of God to fulfill his word as revealed in the Bible. Isn't that something quite wonderful? It is wonderful. we to be in the right place at the right time each one of the body of Christ seeking to know what would you have me do Lord Have you asked him? And I'm speaking here to those who know they have the assurance that they're filled with God. Sins forgiven. An assurance of sins forgiven. And an assurance that it is the life of the Son of God who is dwelling within them by his Spirit, filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Lord, what would thou have me to do? You asked him, do you know? Are you in the right place at the right time? Do you know that God has a purpose for each one in the body of Christ? But yet, how many are actually at the very centre of his perfect will? Or are you rebelling and wanting your own way, your own life. And being saved is just like an insurance policy to yourself. Has his death, is his death being outworked in you that life may come to others? the words of life. Oh God. Oh God, the lost. The lost must hear. They must hear that they are sinners in the sight of a holy God. On the way to, to an eternity when they've had their last breath of Christ is not within if the Son of God is not within if he has not cleansed the heart what a dreadful, dreadful prospect have mercy upon us, O God when the body of Christ so often is filled with those who are only concerned with themselves rather than reaching the unreached to call upon them to be saved through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, help us in these days to be real with yourself. The church is in so much apostasy. 
My heart grieves over the state church, the Church of England. Having religion without the Son of God within it. Yes, there will be some who do have him dwelling within their hearts. But most are just filled with religion, filled with self-righteousness and self-importance, filled with pride of their position in this world. And without the humility of the Son of God within them, without his strength, because they acknowledge their own weakness. Oh God, move. Move and help us. Just as you came and helped Elisha. But Elisha knew his position. He knew as a prophet of God that he had the authority of God behind him. And he could speak out and see you work on your own scale your own supernatural scale. Bring, Lord, life from the dead of the, in the church, within the Church of England. That its liberal ways, its modernism, its compromise with political correctness and the ways of the world the flesh and the devil and to turn in repentance to thyself starting with the one at the top the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of York under him too the bishops and the, and the rest of the clergy to be right with thee to admit their own weakness and their dependency upon thyself to bring a cleansing of the sins of within that church the sins of rebellion against thyself for not being in line with thyself or thy work now let us, I've wandered off again, but there we are. The Holy Ghost, he will speak through me. And it doesn't matter, because they're not my, it's not what my words thinking all this up. No, it's what he has to say. So let's get back and try and keep, keep to this. And he was so stared, was the king of Syria. He said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. He wasn't concerned now with the king of Israel. He was concerned with Elisha, because he saw that it was Elisha, and only Elisha, which stood between himself and his army, having victory over the king of Israel and taking Israel. Elisha, we can see here, he's a type of intercessor, because he stood in the gap before Almighty God. So what did he do, the king of Syria? He sent those who would look for him. And he was, they found that he was in 
Dauphin. Oh, the king of Syria. Oh, we can see him. We can see the tactics of the powers of darkness in the king of Syria. He didn't send them off in the daylight. He sent them off to Dauphin in the dark. The works of darkness. And they compass the, the city. They surrounded the city. And the following morning, we're told, which recorded, that the servant of Elisha he looked out, and what did he see? He saw through his natural eyes a host compass the city, both horses and chariots. And his servant said unto Elisha, Alas, my master, how shall we do? He saw it. But he did not see as God sees. He could only see what was before him. And his natural sight was not a spiritual sight, not a spiritual vision, which Elisha, the man of God, saw. These words from Elisha they were so different because they were words of faith. They were words that believe God. And he said, Fear not. And in these days. Are you looking upon the world and seeing that which causes you to fear? There is the fear of God, which is the respect of God, the acknowledgement of God, that thou art God, and thou alone, O God. And there's that fear in the natural, which is outside of God. And the evil one, oh, he's a past master, and he's still the master of fear. The fear that will play on the hearts and minds of those who are in his control because they still because they belong to his kingdom because they have never been born again of the spirit of God they've never come to a living relationship with the living God Throughout the world, there is that which calls itself religion. No matter what it is, whatever religion it may be, there is that which is there is sex, false sex. Ones that don't take this word of God. Religions which have their other, their other books. 
that they may have words within them. But they're not the words of life. Because Jesus, I am He is life. He is the author of life because he is life. And he is the finisher too of faith because he is faith. And unless you have him within you, you'll be like the servant of Elisha and seeing in the natural because you can only see in the natural because you do not have him who is life within you you do not have the spirit of God within you but Elisha was of another spirit of the Spirit of God and could see and he could say without a shadow of doubt they that be with us are more than they that be with them he saw beyond the horses and the chariots and the men and their weaponry of the king of Syria because as we move on tomorrow for our final part of this study, let us keep in mind, for the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. And that is the key to moving forward in to 2017 which is fast coming upon us oh God may the body of Christ see thyself in these days as a living God as the author of life and the finisher of faith and stare up stare up O oh God that the body of Christ individually will ask you Lord what will you have me to do and see that it is not what they can do but in admitting their weakness before you that your strength the strength through the person of the Holy Ghost will be able to work through each one that the Lord Jesus Christ shall be shown to a lost and dying humanity. For this is asked through his name and for thy glory. Amen.